Dmitry Shimkiv is deputy head of presidential administration of Ukraine in charge of administrative, social, and economic reforms. Welcome to the Wilson Center. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me here. Let me ask you first the big question, sort of a broad overview. How, how do you think Ukraine is doing? How are you doing on all your reform efforts? I think when we uh, look into 2015, uh, we published the report um, uh, on, on, on what's been done in Ukraine. And this is a substantial changes which have been done over one year. And it's ranging from anti-corruption to the judiciary, electronic procurement, new police, financial stabilization, and, and uh, many, many, many things. Let me hold this up so sure. people can get a look at it as sure. well. They, they, they can download it online from the Reforms Org QA. Uh, so in English version as well. So um, this is something that they um, can can look into details. Uh, it's in English, so easy, Great. easy. Uh, but I think that there is still a lot of things to do. We need to recognize the progress that's been done during one year, but we need to look at the, uh, what's ahead of us. Uh, we need to continue on the anti-corruption efforts. But actually, institution that we establish already have a lot of cases on their table. Judicial reform needs to move to the where we reset the whole the judgment system. Decentralization with the involvement of local and regional government on prior big big one because it's about d distribution power and mm -hmm. growing the communities and of course public administration reform which is enables to build a attractive public service which will a again about institutional capacity building institutional capacity is something that's a long-term perspective for ukraine i'm wondering if there's anything that has surprised you most in other words are there areas that have been more resistant to change than you anticipated or areas that perhaps have been easier than others uh, the easiest ways is always where we create something new, like p new police. Um, new police, 13 cities, more than 7,000 uh, police officers, trust to police 60%. Uh, electronic procurement, we started, we introduced a system which very often does not exist in many countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And we and now it's, uh, it's uh, more than 55,000 tenders, uh, 11 bi 12 billion grievous transactions volume, saving almost 900 million grievances uh, through, the, uh, through the electronic procurement system and scaling up for the whole country. That's been a good progress. The areas where we see the resistance, where we have the old system, and this is the area of the prosecutor office, and this is a ju judicial system, and the challenge for the judicial system, because we have to go through this process, uh, which is advised to us by international community, even though their aspiration to make a quick changes being there, as well as political system. I think that when we look at our development of democracy in Ukraine, it's a keep, we, we see we're still building a young democracy through the dialogue, through the conversation, through engagement. And, but so far, I'm extremely happy because we are building the right Western-minded democracy. It was a hiccups, of course. <laughs> and speaking of democracy, what is the mood of the citizens? Are they willing to be patient enough for these reforms to take place? I think that uh, this is again about uh, managing expectations and of course the, the, the anxiety of the pace of change and the, uh, is high. Uh, some of the reforms that's been done that we will see they were very fundamental and substantial for, for continuation of reforms. I think that 2016 for us is a lot about economic development. It's about creating jobs, it's about uh, attracting investments and growing small and medium businesses which are all rely on the rule of law and more empowerment to the communities and the proper government service. So this is what needs to be done. But um, citizens are impatient, uh, as everywhere in the world. Um, government is committed. So, uh, and what, we, what I also would like to say, we have a very good pro-European parliament, and we need to make sure that it continues forward. Was the, uh, Along those lines, what, what can we anticipate as, in terms of the next round of elections? Uh, well, I don't think there will be, uh, like, Again, there's still question and speculation. Will there be elections? I think that new elections would be a very uh, challenging for Ukraine because why? Because there will be more populistic voices in the parliament, and I think the current parliament will be doing everything possible to find the resolution uh, to uh, to the government government versus parliament situation. I think there will be a, a solution, and it's right now happening and taking place in Ukraine. When you look at all the X factors that either make your job more difficult or easier Easier, whether it's the ongoing situation with Russia, uh, whether it's the struggles of the economy, the global refugee crisis, what are the things that are most having an impact on your ability to move forward? I think the security situation and the aggression from Russia is a big uh, impediment to the pace of reforms in the future of Ukraine. Because when uh, we are trying to run a strong marathon with, with a lot of sprints and somebody's cutting your legs and uh, annexation of Crimea, aggression from the Russian military, Milit Russian military, continuing of shelling. That distracts a lot of our energy 
on the security situation. On, uh, the president has to delegate a significant portion of time to build a global coalition to protect the future and security of Ukraine. That puts a lot of time, energy and finance mm -hmm. out of their reform agenda. Nevertheless, Ukraine is fighting two fronts, both on the security, with the help of the global community against Russia, and then a, a strong uh, vision for the reforms. How has your experience in the private sector helped you? A tech entrepreneur, how much is technology a part of the solution? I think that a lot of innovative things that we see is coming from the technology. We are committed to bring uh, to technologies that allow us to leapfrog some of this stage of the development, like electronic procurement system, open mm -hmm. data, uh, uh, different uh, like petitions and so on. So different tools that enable us to do uh, different things. And of course, uh, uh, my knowledge and experience on structuring things. I think that the sit when we're talking about this, I want to come back with, this, with the story of the citizen because a lot of people asking yes. me about um, what's the difference between orange revolution and the division of dignity? And I think this is very, very interesting because through a revolution of dig uh, revolution, uh, orange revolution, Ukrainians become citizens. They become citizens whose votes been stolen. And they said, no, we have the right to vote and this is our choice. But we didn't really understood there, that time, that we have to be responsible citizens. Mm -hmm. And revolution and dignity created a country, first, proud to be Ukrainian, Second, committed to build their own security and defense. And third, responsible citizens, where citizens go and become a watchdog, build civil, strong civil society, participate in the future building of the country. That's irreversible. That's what called a participative democracy. That's what the revolution of dignity and why it's different versus orange revolution. And what do you need to do to continue engaging young people to stay involved and, and to maintain that momentum and excitement? Well, this is uh, young people live very actively. Involved. The vibrant, uh, the social, uh, the civil society in Ukraine is extremely vibrant. It's vocal, investigative journalism is very pushy, and it's great. I think this is what makes democracy democracy. When I look what's happening in Russia, I'm extremely happy that we have a democracy, and we're going to fight to have a sustainable development for for for, for Ukraine. And pe young people, it's new jobs. Look at the high tech sector probably one of the vibrant, 3% of GDP, a lot of acquisition uh, happening this year, a lot of investments. So that's an outspoken word for itself because the growth is high, the attention is high, they are participating in the global economies, the, the opportunity with DCFTA was Europe. This is all an exciting opportunity for an absolutely different country. Well, Mr. Shimkiv, thank you very much for spending some time and talking to us about it and continued success, best of luck. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.